Good morning, everybody. It is Sunday, the 31st of May. Can you believe it? This is just amazing. Uh, we have been in uh, lockdown for uh, over almost two months now, and um, it's been uh, great having the opportunity to share the Word of God with you. And once again this morning, we're going to do that. But just before we do that, um, just a few announcements. One, know that uh, we have words of encouragement on a Wednesday evening and on a Friday evening at 6 o'clock. Some of the disciples of the gathering, they bring a word of encouragement, which is nuggets for our faith, so that we can stand strong in Jesus um, during the week as well. And then every Sunday morning live, we come from the gathering garage <laughs> at this moment. And um, there's a few people who have seen the behind the scenes look of what it is really like. They're standing behind this board and um, in the garage. So uh, sometimes if you hear a car passing by, we just made a joke to them and us, myself and we said that um, someone's racing past the house. I said, where is these people going? She says, they're on their way to church. The only thing is that um, the buildings aren't open yet um, today. It's only from next weekend. And so I just want to welcome you here this morning and just say to you that you're going to be blessed today. If you had a birthday in the last week, we just want to congratulate you. Um, I know of certain people. I know Aurelia Mayberg, um, you're far in the Western Cape. I know you had a birthday this week. Congratulations. Hope you had a blessed time. I know that uh, Jessica de Agrela had a birthday in the last week. God bless you. And uh, many others, which I might not even mention now. If you had a birthday, please um, just click you right there. You've had a birthday in the last week so that those who are watching right now can just go on and just congratulate you um, on your birthday. Uh, so we hope you've had a blessed day and you were spoiled. And uh, we pray that every great and special word that people spoke over your life will come into reality in Jesus' mighty name. And then uh, wherever you are watching from, um, I want to ask you to please uh, just say where you're watching from so that we can just see. And um, that'll be great for us to just see where you're watching from and uh, just say hi to you as well. So I want to start this morning with the word which is really in my heart and I want you to know that this specific word is a word that, word that God spoke to me about three weeks ago while reading the word of God and God clearly spoke into my heart from the book of Acts 10 verse 20 where he said to Peter, Arise therefore, go down with them doubting nothing for i have sent them the words doubting nothing immediately fell into my heart and this morning i want to finish the second part of this prophetic word when god speaks to us how we should respond doubting nothing there is a specific response when god speaks and I want to really emphasize that this morning. And I want to say it's a prophetic word. I'm speaking prophetically because you would see and remember that last week I laid a firm foundation from the book of Matthew, mainly of who Peter is and what he experienced and saw in the presence of Jesus. And I mentioned that God spoke to him saying, go down and go with them, doubting nothing, according to Acts 10 verse 20. But as I mentioned last week, I just laid this firm foundation um, and this week I want to conclude. So if you would, would you just close your eyes with me and we're just going to pray for a moment. Lord, I want to thank you that this is the day that the Lord has made and we rejoice and we are glad in it. We thank you that we've heard the birds singing, that the sun is shining and that we can experience the favor and the goodness and the greatness and the almightiness of who you are in this day in Jesus' name. And I want to thank you, God, that you would be glorified in this word this morning. I thank you, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, and our Father, that you would just be magnified and that we'll glorify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in this day. We are also in this time celebrating Pentecost and the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And I thank you that we can celebrate that as well this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So, as I mentioned last week, Peter was the man that denied that he was a disciple of Jesus three times. Can you imagine 
Peter, a disciple of Jesus, and you know what I said last week, and if you didn't see it last week, please go and listen to that word, because it'll really just get the whole picture together, and it'll just form a great foundation for what we're saying today. But Peter, a disciple of Jesus, he denied Jesus three times in the most critical moment of his life. He denied Jesus three times. Jesus actually knew that he was going to deny him three times. He said to him, before you deny me, um, if you deny me the third time, a rooster will crow. And it's exactly what happened. And because of that um, and other things that happened, Jesus went to the cross and Jesus was crucified. He was resurrected on the third day. And then he appeared to the disciples in a time of 40 days where he was speaking about the kingdom of God and what he was uh, wanting to let them know about how they should operate and do things on earth. And this is what is so amazing to me, is that Jesus showed total forgiveness to Peter after his resurrection, restoring total trust to him, this is Peter, and giving him a new mission by asking Peter three times. This was incredible. Asking Peter three times, Peter, do you love me? And we know what the response of Peter was. Every time Peter said, yes, Lord, I love you. I love you, Jesus. And you know everything. And you know that I love you. And so their relationship was restored. And Peter's instruction was threefold. One, Peter, feed the lambs of mine. Feed them. Feed the lambs of Jesus. The second instruction was, tend to the sheep of mine. Tend to the sheep that are going to follow me. And another translation says it this way. It says, shepherd my sheep. In other words, take care and look out for those sheep of mine. And so when you have a pastor, um, he would lead the flock to green pastures. And so a pastor's main role is to take care and tend to the flock, the sheep of God. And then the third thing that Jesus said to him was, he said, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. And so while you are listening to this word today and every word of encouragement that comes to you on a Wednesday or a Friday evening, we are really just trying to feed you. And I want to say to you that we can only give as much as we receive. So we also get and we also receive. And I want to thank you for listening and tuning in to this morning's message. Well, we went into the New, in, the New Testament uh, after we ended off in the Old Testament last week. Then we got into the New Testament when Jesus ascended to heaven and the disciples waited on the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And guess who was present? You said it, Peter. Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost. And shared the gospel with those who questioned and was amazed at how the disciples spoke in tongues. So what happened on the day of Pentecost is actually when Jesus ascended to heaven, he said to them, go and wait for the promise of my father, which will come upon you. It will come from on high. It will come upon you. And then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. If you read in Acts 1 verse 8, it actually says in the Amplified, you will be my witness, you will, be my, you will have ability, strength, might, so that you can do the task of witnessing. And so I want to say to you today that one of the signs of being baptized with the Holy Spirit is that you speak in tongues. You speak in tongues. You speak in a tongue that is a tongue that comes from the Spirit of God. And when you speak in that tongue, it is not the same as the gifts of the Spirit in uh, 1 Corinthians 12. But it is the Spirit really just enabling you and giving glory to God and just strengthening you in a, in a powerful way. And I want to encourage you, if you're listening today and you've not yet received the baptism of the Holy Spirit by speaking in tongues, the Apostle Paul says when we're in a gathering like we are now and when we're amongst uh, each other, uh, what does it profit if I speak 10,000 words in a tongue? It profits you nothing. If I start speaking in tongues, which I so very often do, I speak in tongues, I just glorify God and I just, I just get into that secret place with God and I speak in tongues. I mean, that is just so profound. But what would it help me if I start speaking in tongues now? You wouldn't understand it. 
unless it is the gift of the Spirit that comes upon me and I speak in a tongue and I can actually give the interpretation of that tongue. And there's a massive difference. So on that day, when the um, 120 disciples, uh, apostles were on the, on the um, upper room, they received power from on high. And they started speaking in tongues. And all the people that were gathered together there um, in Jerusalem, they heard them speaking in their own language. And they were amazed. And they even said to these people, are these people drunk with new wine? And what is amazing about that translation is, is that Jesus said that you can't put new wine into an old wine skin. And so the disciples on the day of Pentecost and even waiting 10 days to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they had new wine skins. They had a new desire. They had a new longing for what God promised them to have. And I want to say to you this morning, you can't go forward with the new having a mindset of the old. It is imperative that you understand this morning that you can't go to the new with the old mindset. And so this morning, I'm speaking a prophetic word to you this morning regarding doubting nothing. And even your soul, your mind, your intellect, your will, your emotions might be playing games with you and saying, no man, but we're finding ourselves in this position and, and we need to just return to the old. I want to tell you that we need a new. We need new. We need new from God. We need yes. new inspiration. We need new revelation. We need new wisdom. We need new knowledge. We need that from God. It's not that we didn't have any, but we believe at the gathering in progressive revelation. And so as we progressively are more intimate with God and we grow in Him, I tell you that the more He reveals unto us, man, it's getting hot. I feel that the fire of the Holy Ghost here this morning. And I just want to tell you this morning that you need to really just maybe just get up and just say, Lord, I worship you and I glorify you. Where are you staying right now? Let's just give a moment to praise God. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you that there was a day called Pentecost. I thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, that your Spirit, your Spirit enables us, your Spirit empowers us, your Spirit gives us the ability, you give us the wisdom, you give us the the strength. I thank you that you speak through us and you speak mysteries to us in Jesus' mighty name. And I thank you this morning, Lord, that you're opening up your word to us in the greater sense. And Lord, I want to pray, God, that old wineskins, they will go and that we'll have the new wineskins with new wine for the new that you want us to experience, to see and to have in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Lord. Amen. I just want to say to you that in the week we had a um, committee meeting in regards to the opening of the church. And I'll say something about that just later. And I was just reading out of James 1 and James 3 uh, to the guys. And I said to them, listen, the word of God says that when we, sh when we are short of wisdom, we need to ask God for wisdom. And that wisdom is not, not earthly wisdom. That wisdom is a wisdom from God. It is a supernatural impartation from the will of God on earth so that we can do as we pray as it is in heaven so it be done on earth and i want to tell you that we are in an appointed time and an appointed place where we need the wisdom of god so that we will not step out of line doubting nothing but we will be in step with what god is saying so yes, on the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up and um, he shared the gospel with those who questioned and was amazed about the disciples speaking in tongues. And then if you have your Bible with you, I want you to please go with me to Acts 2 verse 37 and we're going to read till verse 42. Acts 2 verse 37 to verse 42. And uh, you shouldn't close your Bibles if we finish reading the scripture. I want you to just stay in the word because we're going to go into the book of Acts just a little bit further to get to this revelation and the prophetic word that God has for us, doubting nothing. So in verse 37, the word of God says, Now when they heard this, these were the people that were amazed and hearing them, uh, the, the word of God being spoken and being glorified in their midst through the disciples who couldn't even speak the language, but who was enabled by the Holy Spirit. And so it says, and now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And then Peter said to them, who said to them? Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you 
be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I want to tell you today, maybe someone has, has said to you in the past because of a lack of revelation that the gift of the Holy Spirit is only for certain people. I want to tell you that the gift of the Holy Spirit and the enablement of speaking in tongues is for everyone. Maybe you have given up on having the desire. Maybe you have stopped asking the Lord to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. I want to encourage you today. There was a day in my life, I can clearly remember it, that I was asking and waiting upon the Lord. I actually took a whole week in preparation for that Sunday when that guy came to minister on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I was waiting. I, 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 was, I was in fear, in awe of God, not knowing how it's going to happen because it happens by faith. You need to have faith when, when you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It, it just doesn't just come. It, it, it just doesn't fall out of heaven and all, all of a sudden you can speak in tongues and you have the gift of, of the Holy Spirit. No, no, no. You have to desire it with your whole heart. You need to say, I'm taking away the old wine skin and all the old thinking and I want the new. And I want to tell you that you don't even get baptized once. When I read the book of Acts the disciples and the apostles, they were filled with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And just in Acts 4, um, in verse 33, verse 31, verse 32, verse 33, uh, after they have been um, put into a place where they were told that they're not allowed to speak anymore because they've healed a lame man, um, they went to the church and they were gathering together. And what did they do? They said something. They said, Lord, please give us boldness that we will share this word of God more boldly than ever before. And they've just raised a man that was lame. And then the word of God says, in the whole place where they were together, it was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so I want to tell you that the filling of the Holy Spirit is not just a once off. There's so many times when you get a new tongue and just a new revelation and just a deeper of God. I want to tell you there is more. There is more in God. I'm excited this morning. I want to tell you that I want to shout it from the rooftops. I'm not in the roof, but I'm in the garage and I'm knowing that the people next door are hearing me right now, but I want to shout it out that Jesus is alive and His power is real. I'm not talking about this fakeness and those people that just uh, make acts and a mockery of the gospel and the power of God. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the realness and the pureness and the power of the gospel that's got the power to save people from hell to heaven, yes. that take them out of darkness into light. That's the thing I'm talking about, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then the word goes on and we get to verse 39. And then Peter said, for this promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. And then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. Can you say amen? Can you say praise God? Can you see that when the gospel is being preached and people hear and they repent, they're not just saying sorry. Sorry is a just a good way to say that I'm uh, sorry, but I'm going to do it again. But when you repent, you turn around and you have a different lifestyle. They heard the word to repent. And then the word goes on and it says in verse 42, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. And that is one of the pillars that the gathering church are standing on at this moment. It's a word that God gave us and he said to us that we should steadfastly be continuing in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Just a footnote. The disciples did not share the gospel with Gentiles, the heathen, those who were not part of the Jews and the children of Israel. They only shared the gospel with their own people. But in his address to the people that were saying, what is this that we hear from you guys after you've had this encounter? In verse 39, the apostle Peter makes this profound prophetic statement. And he says, for the promise is to you and to your children. He's speaking to the Jews. He's speaking to his own specific people. And then he goes on. And to all who are afar off. As many as the Lord our God will call. 
to and all who are afar off is a massive statement in that moment because Peter did not ever think that they will share the gospel of Jesus Christ and of the kingdom of God with the heathens or the Gentiles. At that point in time, he was just thinking about the Jews and the Israelites and that they would come together and that as a people of God will be reconciled with the Father and never thinking that others might also experience him. I want to tell you good news today. I don't know about you, but I'm not a Jew. But I know one thing is that I am part of the gospel and kingdom of God because I've come to salvation through faith in Jesus Christ and him alone. And then in Acts 10, we read about a man with the name of Cornelius. I spoke about him quickly last week. Uh, he was from the Italian regiment. Although he was not a Jewish proselyte, Cornelius believed in Jewish monotheism and ethical teachings. You can go and watch last week's video where I spoke about what is Jewish monotheism, theism, <laughs> sorry I've got it wrong there, and ethical teachings. You can go and look what I said about it. In spite of the fact that he was devout, he still needed to hear the way of salvation. Cornelius had a vision of an angel of God speaking to him. Telling him to send for Simon Peter, who was staying at Simon the Tanner in Joppa, to come to him so he can tell Cornelius what to do. So Cornelius sent two of his servants and one of his soldiers to Joppa to call for Peter. I don't know about you. But the Bible says about Cornelius, he said to him that he was a man that was continually praying before God. He was a man that was continually giving alms. He was helping the poor and the needy. I want to tell you, and the angel said to him, your prayers and your alms have come up as a memorial before God. I want to tell you, maybe you have been giving, maybe you have been praying and you feel that nothing is happening and it's like you're praying to the ceiling. I want to tell you, don't believe the lie of the devil. I want to tell you today that believe the word of God, that every prayer, it's like incense in front of the word of the throne of God where it goes up and the prayers of the saints are heard. I want to encourage you, keep on keeping on and pressing in. Don't stop. Don't stop. And so then we read further in Acts 10, verse 9 to verse 20. Acts 10, verse 9 to verse 20. If you've got your Bibles open, please go with me, walk with me through these scriptures. The Word of God says the following. The next day, as they went on their journey, drawing near to the city, this is the two servants and the soldier of Cornelius, Peter went up on the housetop to pray. Say housetop. How stop? How stop to do what? To pray. About the sixth hour, then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. Say a trance. A trance. And saw heaven opened and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners descending to him and led down to the earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice, say a voice, a voice came to him saying, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord. Do you see the exclamation mark there? This is a stance that he's taking. Do you see that the old wine scheme is standing up and it's saying, No, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common. It is not part of my custom. It's not part of who I am. I'm, I'm nothing common or unclean. And a voice, say a voice. Come on, say it out loud. Say a voice spoke to him again a second time. Say a second time. What God has cleansed, you must not call common. And this was done how many times? Three times. 
Three times, three times, this voice is speaking to him. I want to tell you, Jesus said to him three times, Do you love me, Peter? He said, Yes, Lord. Do you love me, Peter? Yes, Lord. Do you love me, Peter? Yes, Lord. I want to tell, say to you that many a times it takes the third day, it takes the third speaking of God to get you to a resurrection. Three days, three times speaking. And this was done three times and the object was taken up into heaven again. And now while Peter wondered, say wondered, wondered, wondered within himself what this vision which he had just seen meant. Behold, the men who had been sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And they called and asked whether Simon, whose surname was Peter, was lodging there. And while Peter thought about the vision, I want to tell you that when God is speaking to you, there's many a times that he's saying things to us and we are at first saying, no, Lord, no, Lord, this can't be God. I can clearly remember when God was speaking to myself and to Lizette that we should start the gathering, Polokwane. I can remember there were so many times when I said, no, Lord, we went to Nelspray to go and see if we can plant a church. We went to Pretoria. We went to Shrokopmunt, Namibia. We went to Vintuk, Namibia. We went all over and every time when we went there to see if, we, if this is not the place where God says that we need to, to plant the gathering, to plant the establishment of coming together and being a body as part of the greater body of Christ. I, I can clearly remember that every time that God was speaking to me, I said, I said no, Lord, no, no, just like Peter. And I was thinking about these things constantly in my head about what this could mean that God is speaking to me. And then God used uh, people uh, that not knew nothing, nothing about what was happening in my heart, nothing. And they would come to me and they would just say to me like this, God is saying that he wants you to plant a ministry as part of the body of Christ in, the, in Polokwane and you are coming against it. God says it's going to be Polokwane and until you give in, you will not have peace. And I didn't have peace, but that moment, that moment when I said, yes, Lord, I will not doubt your word that you said here that moment I, it happened I had a peace a supernatural peace I had a change of heart in one moment's time and I can give God the glory and the honor and the praise today because when he speaks to you his word is true and so while Peter was thinking about the vision in verse 19 the spirit say the spirit set to him. I want to tell you when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, you know it. There's no doubt in your heart. You know when the Spirit of truth is speaking to you. Behold, three men are seeking you. I mean, how? How is that even possible? Do you see the picture? There's a man with the name of Cornelius. He has an encounter with an angel of God. He has instruction to send some of his people to go to a certain place, to a certain town, to a certain house, at a certain address. GPS located by the Spirit of God, sending them there. And while Peter is on top of a roof, having a trance, getting a vision from God, having this internal struggle, saying no to what God has called clean, the Spirit of God says to him, hey, hey, behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, say arise. I want to tell you to get into that new season and to get that new, uh, new wine skin, you need to arise. You can't do the same things that you have been doing and expect a different result. You need to arise. He says, arise, therefore, go down and go with them. Doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Who is the I? The I is God, for I have sent them. Sent them. When God gives you an instruction on the rooftop, we need to go into the street to share the good news of what God has done for us. I want to tell you that there's many people that constantly want a heavenly experience and they want heavenly encounters for personal fame. But God wants us to meet us and He has 
divine moments and appointments and times scheduled. It's not in our uh, program. It is in His. It's when we seek Him, just seek Him and His kingdom and His righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. Um, he will have meetings with us. He will have encounters with us so that we can be more effective and advancing the kingdom on earth. Amen. And then I also want to say to you today that when we don't just get anointed for excitement, you can see that I'm excited today. I'm excited, but I'm more than excited. I've got a zealous fire burning in my soul this morning, bringing this word to you. And I want to tell you that when God anoints you, He doesn't anoint you for excitement and for goosebumps, but He anoints you for a purpose. He anoints you for a purpose. What a great day. We need doubting nothing. God didn't say to Peter, Peter, don't doubt. He didn't say to Peter, don't doubt. Which will mean, don't doubt that I spoke to you. No, he said, go down and go with them, doubting nothing. Doubting nothing. There's a massive difference in saying doubting nothing and don't doubt. Peter heard and knew the voice of God. Peter heard and knew. The Bible says that the sheep knows the shepherd's voice. But every moment, every second counting down and every step that he was about to give, whatever it could be that would make him doubt on the way to do what he was told and to do even when he would arrive, where he would arrive and where he would share the message, he was warned to not Doubt anything, doubting nothing that will happen. When God spoke to Peter saying, go down when he was on the rooftop and go with them, doubting nothing. God was saying to Peter, I'm doing something and you need to walk on the water, Peter. I'm giving you a word and more than the waves and the winds you encountered before you sunk after I gave you a word to walk on the water, this time there will be more distractions, Peter. But doubting nothing, obey and do my word. You see, Peter went with the men and met Cornelius and started sharing the word. And then in Acts 10, verse 44 to verse 48, we read the following. I want to say to you that we are many a times like a Peter. And that's why I laid a firm foundation in part one about Peter. And I want to bring you into this place where God is speaking to us as a church. And He's saying to us, doubting nothing. And while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. And in that moment, while he's speaking the word and the Holy Spirit is falling on these pe people, in that moment, Peter had to be doubting nothing. It could have been a distraction for him in that moment while bringing the gospel of the kingdom to the people. He could have doubted in that moment, but he chose to doubt nothing. And then verse 45 says, And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, say astonished, as many as came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. And Peter for they heard them speak with tongues, say they spoke with tongues and magnify God. I want to tell you that speaking in tongues is real. I want to tell you today that you need to magnify God and have a desire. And then Peter answered. And this is what is so amazing to me. When he saw the people speaking in tongues and magnifying God, he could have doubted something, but he doubted nothing. Can anyone forbid water that those should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? Didn't doubt nothing. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. And they, then they asked him to stay a few days. God used Peter in Acts 2 verse 39 to say, For the promise is to you. And to your children. And in that day, he made a ma massive prophetic proclamation, not knowing that he would bring the word to the Gentiles and saying, and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. 
Because Peter was always willing and available to be used by God, God used him to change and break religious paradigms and boxes through one event. And Peter was a disciple open to the revelation from God and ready to speak that revelation. You pick it up when we were speaking last week that Peter was a man open for revelation. When Jesus asked the disciples, who do the people say that I am? And they said, no, some say this and some say that prophet. And then he said, but who do you say that I am? And who was the one that had the revelation? It was Peter. Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of God. I want to tell you that will you get in trouble when you break boxes and you start having new wine skins for the new wine? Oh, for sure. You will be in trouble because those who are still stuck in their old tradition and their box and the religious way of doing things, they will come up against you. And guess what? It will be the people that serve the Lord with you because you have a new revelation. And remember, Jesus spoke to Peter three times through that vision and three times he said to him, hey, what I have called clean, don't you call it unclean. Go with them. God knows exactly every move and he knows who he can use. You see, because Peter was part of the school of the spirit. Peter had a a relationship with Jesus Christ and God the Father. Peter was at every event and every place where he could meet and gather. And Peter was bold and Peter had the Holy Spirit. And Peter was a man full of faith. The Bible says that Peter was an uneducated and an untrained man, but he was full of the Holy Spirit. I want to give so many of you today a word of encouragement. I want to tell you that I'm an uneducated and I'm an untrained man. But I know one thing, that the Holy Spirit's power is the greatest gift that I have ever received, the gift in me, and not even speaking about God, the gift of salvation and eternal life that I've got because His Holy Spirit is living within me, and I know and have the revelation of the love of God. But you get in trouble when you start doing things because in Acts 11 from verse 1, the word of God says, And now the apostles and the brethren who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. When the word of God goes out to people come to salvation, it's no quiet thing. There's nothing quiet about it. The word spreads. It will go far. And when Peter came up to Jerusalem, those of the circumcision contended with him. You see the word contended, contended with him and saying, you went into uncircumcised men and ate with them. Is it even possible? They're speaking out of the old religious box, the old religious way of doing things. But Peter, you see that word, but I just love that word, but those who are part of our ministry for a long time in in the gathering, you would know that I just love that word, but, but just say with me, but, but Peter explained it to them in order from the beginning saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying and in a trance, I saw a vision and an object descending like a great sheet led down from heaven by four corners and came to me. And when I observed it intently, when I observed it intently and considered, I saw four footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, I heard a voice. I heard a voice. You can't deny that voice. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has at any time entered my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven. What God has cleansed, you must not call common. Now this was done three times and all were drawn up again into heaven. And at that very moment, three men stood before the house where I was, having been sent from Caesarea. Then the Spirit told me to go with them, doubting nothing, saying doubting nothing. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house, and who said to him, send men to Joppa, and call forth for Simon, whose surname is Peter who will tell you words by which you and your whole household will be saved. I don't know about you, but there are many people out there wanting to know how to become saved. You have the answer. You have it. 
You have the revelation of Jesus Christ. If you're listening to this message today and you're a born again believer, you have the message. Bring that message. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them as upon us at the beginning. Then I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John, indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If therefore God gave them the same gift as he has given us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could withstand God? Wow. And when they heard these things, they became silent. They became silent. And they glorified God, saying, Then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful this morning that there was a man who stood up in boldness, obedient to the word of God, throwing off an old wineskin and doubting nothing, sharing the gospel of the kingdom and breaking the paradigms and the religi religious boxes of the past so that we can come through reformations and reformations and getting new revelation so that we can be saved. I'm so thankful. When you obey the word of the Lord, even when other brothers and sisters in Christ might not understand and bring you into question, the testimony of your obedience will be proof enough for those who criticize and question you that God's will must be done no matter our thoughts, our reason and our knowledge. We should be doubting nothing. I conclude this morning giving you a word from my heart saying to you that as a church we are entering a season and when God will be speaking we should be doubting nothing. We are in an exciting time. We are in a privileged time. I want to tell you might feel constrained and constricted but I want to tell you today that the word of God has never been contained or, const uh, or restrained. I want to tell you today that share the good news of Jesus Christ. Share these videos. Share our stuff. When you speak to somebody, don't speak negatively, but speak positively. Not just negative against positive. Speak truth. Speak God to them. Because the truth shall set you free when you hear the word of God. Amen. Can I just pray with you this morning? Can I ask you to just where you are, just to stand with me just for a moment. And where we are, just, just for a moment, just thank God, saying, Lord, when you speak to me, let me be doubting nothing. Every step of every way, of every minute and every second of where you are leading us and guiding us, where you are leading me and where you are leading everyone that is watching this message this morning or tonight or whenever they're watching this, may we respond accordingly in Jesus' mighty name. When we hear the voice of God, may we react in Jesus' name. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will fall afresh on us in Jesus' mighty name. We need you so desperately. We need you, God. We can't do anything without you. Jesus said, I don't do anything if the Father doesn't show me and doesn't tell me. And so this morning, we come in the same manner and we say, Lord, that we can't do anything if you don't say it to us and if you don't show us. I thank you that you reveal your son Jesus to us so that we can proclaim this gospel, doubting nothing in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you. Thank you that you are glorified in all that we have said. Even though you use a man, it is to the glory of God that we give honor, praise, adoration and exclamation this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen. Now this is, um, this is uh, from an a, a absolute high to, to just giving you something that uh, we need to announce this morning. Uh, to the gathering family and um, uh, in regards to our announcements of the opening of church gatherings on level three. Well, dear gathering family, firstly, I would like to say from myself, Lizette, Peter and Caroline from Leidenburg that we really miss you a lot. And we do hope that you are healthy and doing well during this time of lockdown. As you know, 
the president and the government of South Africa has recently approved the opening of churches and religious institutions on level three of the national lockdown, starting from the 1st of June, which will be tomorrow. This not only means that we are allowed to open the church building for services, but we may also provide support, counseling, and relief where needed. All these need to be done in line with specific guidelines, stipulations, and regulations. Although we do welcome the announcement by the President, our priority is the safety, health, and well-being of you, your family, and your children. With that said, we will not be opening for church services in Polokwane or Leidenburg at this time. We will, however, continue with regular services and encouraging messages on various online platforms as we have become accustomed to over the last few weeks. I want to assure you that we as a committee do not take this decision lightly. We had and will continue to have lengthy discussions regarding the way forward for us as church family. Please continue praying for us as we seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit in doing the will of God with His wisdom and not ours. Also keep praying for our president and the leaders of our country so that they too shall make decisions that are in line with the will of God. Can you say Amen? Amen. We will communicate additional information on the way forward over the next few weeks. Thank you very much for your continued support. Stay healthy, stay safe, and know that we truly love you in Jesus' name. From myself, Stephen, Lizette, Peter, Caroline, and the Gathering Committee, we just want to say that you are champions. Keep up the faith. Keep in the Word and continue your relationship with God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And be a blessing as you are blessed by the Word of God and encourage one another in the faith. In Jesus' name. We love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday. And God willing and we live, we will hear another encouraging message on Wednesday evening. Have a blessed day. Thank you.